So here's another one for us. Is there a point in time when through lines, and I'd love it if you'd explain what through lines are, <coughs> yeah. when through lines connections with DNA are significant enough to be considered worthy of accepting the proposed parents? Like that was a mouthful right there. Yeah. So, so what through lines is, is a uh, technology through ancestry DNA where they will take your DNA matches and the trees of those matches and they will identify who are the common ancestors between okay. those people and give you hints to kind of say, hey, you have all of these people who report descent mm -hmm. from this common ancestral couple yeah. and they also share DNA with you. Um, could that DNA have come mm -hmm. from that common ancestral couple? Um, a similar technology at MyHeritage is mm -hmm. the theories of family relativity. Oh yes. Right? Yes. So there's there's similar approaches at several companies and they use this to give you hints of who your ancestors could be. Now your question about well if we've got all of these matches who all descend mm -hmm. from this couple um, how many is significant enough to be considered worthy of accepting that ancestral couple? Yeah. And <clears throat> that's kind of a hard question to answer because it will depend on the scenario. If we have some of those descendants mm -hmm. who have a really strong documented paper trail back <laughs> to that ancestral couple and they're sharing appropriate amounts of DNA oh. with the other proposed descendants of mm -hmm. that couple, then you can sometimes build a proof argument around that to confirm and yeah. prove that indeed all of these people do descend from this ancestral couple. Mm -hmm. The challenge there is if a lot of the time people will claim an ancestral couple because <laughs> it's convenient, they were in the area, maybe they, yeah. you know, maybe they're related to somebody famous <laughs> and will adopt that ancestral couple as, oh yeah, that's our ancestors. And when they publish that online, suddenly that it's, proliferates mm -hmm. everywhere and so everybody has it in their tree. Just because all of the descendants say that this is who their ancestor is, it really comes back to the evaluation of the documentary evidence to evaluate what is the proof that we have that mm -hmm. any of these people are tied to this specific couple and that this specific couple even existed, mm -hmm. right? So we need to rely both on genetic and documentary evidence okay. in order to really prove uh, these, these relationships. It's not necessarily a matter of how many people say the information is true. It really is dependent on the underlying evidence supporting mm -hmm. uh, the, the documentation. And in this way, genetic genealogy is genealogy. We yes. need the document evidence and we need the DNA evidence to come to bear on that document evidence and interpret it. Mm -hmm. But in the end, at the end of the day, we really need both to achieve genealogical proof and, and determine what is accurate. Mm -hmm.